Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is lecture two, and we're going to do it in probably two parts, but I'm not going to make any more predictions, so I don't lie to you. But this is part one. I know it'll be at least two. Okay, so let's take a look at what matter and energy really are. Matter is something that occupies space and has mass, and energy is the ability to work. Energy and matter can neither be created nor destroyed, but can only change in form. In 1905, Albert Einstein came up with a theory of relativity that incorporated energy, mass, and the speed of light in the closest thing that physics has gotten to a unifying idea that explains the universe. E stands for energy, M for mass, and C is the speed of light, which is considered the universal speed limit. This equation shows that matter can be converted into energy, and vice versa. Some basic reminders about science and the scientific method. A hypothesis is not a guess in the conventional sense. It is a possible explanation for something that is observed, but all hypotheses must be testable. Laws or principles are so well supported by so much evidence that they are simply accepted as true. However, these can be overturned if there is experimental data that shows us that they need to be changed. Science is always in flux and is based on a few coordinating principles. It must be based in observation, it must be testable, and it is always based in constant questioning. Nothing is ever accepted fully. Scientists are very fond of saying, yeah, but what if blank happened? There are two basic types of observations, subjective and objective. Subjective examples include, it's hot in here. Vin Diesel is hot over there. He's a shorty, or optical illusions fool the eye. Objective observations is, include, it's 22 degrees Celsius in here. There was 2.3 centimeters of rainfall per square centimeter in the last 24 hours, which is a lot. He is 1.7 meters tall, or he weighs 83 kilograms. So keep in mind that there are two different types of observations, and obviously the one we most focus on are the objective observations in chemistry. Now if you recall, we had the SI units which were set up by Antoine Lavoisier, or he helped to establish them anyway. You do need to know these, so make sure that you have the um, notes page for this sheet highlighted. Make sure that you understand the base units and symbols, for each of the different types of quantities. This is the international prototype made of platinum and iridium, and it is kept at the BIPM, which stands for, and I'm going to badly mispronounce the French because I don't speak French, is Bureau International de Poids de et Mesure. Under conditions specified by the first CGPM, or General Conference, Conference on Weights and Measures, in 1889. The task of the BIPM is to ensure worldwide uniformity of measurements and their traceability to the International System of Units, or SI. The unit of volume is a liter and that is equal to one cubic decimeter, or 1,000 cubic centimeters. One liter of water has a mass of almost exactly one kilogram, when measured at four degrees Celsius, which is the temperature at which water is its most dense. So one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter, and that has a mass of one gram under those conditions. The meter is the base unit of length, and is currently defined as, now brace yourself on this one, the length of the path traveled by light in a vacuum in 1 over 299,792, or 299,792,458 eighths of a second. It is also defined now as equal to 1,650,763.73 wavelengths of the orange-red emission line of the Krypton-86 atom in a vacuum. Although it's now no longer based on a standard object, the original meter bar, which is made of platinum and iridium, is still kept by the BIPM under its original conditions since 1889. 
these are some metric prefixes that you will need and I make sure that you have those make sure that you are highlighting them in your notes and make sure that you do understand them because um, I'm not going to go over them for you the chemistry students now you should have had this for the last oh eight years or so and um, you should be able to do these but one of the things to pay attention to are the multiplier column because those exponential notations will come in handy later So why metric? Well, because the medieval and imperial systems have really unrelated, really super complicated fractional units, and the metric system have no fractions. Some imperial units to show you how silly this all is. One township equals 36 sections, which equals 23,040 acres. One acre is 160 square poles, or 100,000 square gunter links, or 43,560 square feet, or 10 chains. One chain equals 22 yards, but an engineer's chain is 100 feet. One barrel is 42 gallons, or 196 pounds, or 55 gallons. One gallon equals four quarts with two pints per quart or four cups, unless it's a Queen Anne wine gallon, the milk gallon, or the imperial gallon, but there are 62.4 pounds per cubic foot of water. And don't forget the statute mile, the league, the nautical mile, and the marine league. So you get the idea. Metric is much easier because it's multiples of 10. It's easy to handle it. A couple of other silly units, which I thought were fun. There's a liquid pint, which is 28.875 cubic inches. The liquid quart is 128 drams, or 7,680 minims. A teaspoon is 1 and 1 third drams, which is 238 scruples. There is the troy ounce, the arv... I can't even pronounce this one. Arvois du poids ounce, and a pound of feathers is not the same as a pound of gold. There is a long ton and a short ton, but don't get them confused with the furlong or the fathom. We also have bushels, pecks, palms, and hands, but they have nothing to do with carrots and rods. Remember again, metric equals no fractions. So, now that you can kind of understand why we use the metric system in the first place, um, let's talk about measurement. There's differences in accuracy versus precision, and I promise you, you will see this on an exam or quiz. Accuracy means that the measurement is closest to the accepted value. Precision means that you get consistent results obtained, and a measurement can be precisely inaccurate. And you can see that in the middle example there. Okay, now I did warn you that exponent problems were going to come up, and we're going to start with them now. So let's take a look at these four quantities. You have 2.34 times 10 to the 5th times 4.22 times 10 to the negative 8th divided by 9.22 times 10 to the negative 12 times 3.15 times 10 to the 4th. Well, the first thing you need to remember is that when you have a negative exponent in a fraction, you flip its position to the one um, below it or above it. So the negative 12th quantity would go up to the top, the negative 8th quantity would go up to the bottom, and then you add and subtract and do all sorts of fun stuff, and your final answer is going to be 3.40 times 10 to the fourth. I highly recommend you practice with this material. It will bite you in the butt later if you do not. Okay, now significant figures. Significant figures are the bane of most people in chemistry, and we're going to take a look at um, sig figs. Remember, sig figs are those that can be accurately measured, and there are lots of rules. Here are the four main rules you need to know. All non-zero numbers are significant. Zeros between non-zero numbers are significant. Trailing zeros, which means they're at the end, are significant only if the number as a decimal point, otherwise it's insignificant. Zeros to the left of the first non-zero different digit are also insignificant because they're simply placeholders. So let's take a look at these. I want you to take a look at these, pause the lecture, and then come back and tell me how many there are. I will go over them after you pause it and practice with this. Okay, now that you're back, the first one has three sig figs. One, two, three, four, five, six has six. 5,004 has four. 602 has three. Six. I have no idea. I think it's six billion and nine. 
um, has 10, 5.640 has 4, 12, uh, 120,000 with a decimal point has 6, but 120,000 without the decimal point has 2. And then 456 uh, one hundred thousandths is 3, 52 thousandths is 2, and then 0. 0.0000 out of item 91 is 2. Okay, we will come back and practice some more in just a moment.